All right, this is Arab Talk with Jessan Jamal. I'm Jessan Nam. And this is Jamal Dejani. Jamal, we have an extraordinary show today. We have a lot to cover. We're very fortunate today to have in studio with us Professor Rabab Abdulhadi, uh, director, founder of the Ahmed program at San Francisco State, one of the leading um, academics and intellectuals on the question of pa Palestine and uh, intersectional analyses of Palestine. I mean, truly a gifted scholar. We have a lot to talk about today, Jamal, and as a context for the discussion with Professor Abdul Hadi and some breaking news that we have having to do with uh, what's happening at San Francisco State, I think as a backdrop and as a context for that, we need to talk a little bit about Senate Bill 1. Now, just for our listeners, in the midst of all the chaos in Washington, in the midst of the shutdown of, the, uh, of our government, with 800,000 people not being paid, with gridlock between the king, you know, in the Congress, between the House and the Senate, and the impossibility of getting anything done for this country. And 80,000 uh, federal employees. 800,000. 800, sorry, 800,000 uh, employees. Not being able to work. The Senate, in its infinite wisdom, found the opportunity to work on one bill and one bill only and pass a bill basically about the BDS movement, about essentially freedom of speech, and about the ability for people to condemn, to condemn the inalienable right that people have to boycott, divest, and sanction whomever they want. So I think as a backdrop to speaking with Professor Abdul Hadi, we should take a little bit of time to condemn, to call out, and to articulate the so-called I mean, we, we're talking about 71 senators, Jamal, who voted for this discriminatory, anti-constitutional uh, bill. We need to call it the people among the 71 who claim to be progressive, who claim to be liberal, yet voted for this outrageous BDS bill. And we will. So uh, just to make it a little bit clear, 25 of these senators are from the Democratic Party. They joined the GOP on Tuesday with Marco Rubio to pass legislation that would empower states to punish companies and individuals who boycott Israel to protest its occupation of Palestinian territories. So this is just to make it very uh, What simple. has that got to do with the United States? They basically interest? voted to trample on the First Amendment and and I and I've said in the, uh, you know in the, in the title of our show the, uh, that these senators voted to shred the Constitution. So they passed the bill, 77 to 23 votes, and basically those senators who voted for the bill, uh, well, number one, I encourage them to reread if they haven't read the I'm Constitution. <laughs> they should reread the Constitution. Well, I'm not even sure they and, read the bill, Jamal. And, and, you know, which protects basically against the McCarthy-era tactics hmm. that this bill endorses. So the, uh, the bill that they've passed, the anti-boycott bill, is an attack on Americans and on the Constitution. So, again, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Rabab Abdel Hadi with us right here in the studio. Welcome, Professor Abdul Hadi. Thank and you for having who me. So it was a basically pleasure. had issues herself, attacks on academic freedom, well, that's attacks on the First Amendment, c c similar issues, but we'll come back to this. Yes. But wait a minute, Jamal, I think we need to contextualize it. Professor Abdul, ha Abdul Hadi is the tip of the spear of the attack on academic freedom in this country, meaning she has been, I'm sorry to say this, Rabab, you have been targeted. Yeah. You, have, you are the poster academic yes. for uh, vicious uh, targeted attacks on people who support the indivisibility of justice right. in this country and have, and have been the object of those attacks for many, many years. Yes. And um, should we start with the good news just before we get to the bad news? Or, or I mean, 
I don't know. Does it Which matter? Which good news you want to well, talk about? Well, I mean, the two thing. lawsuits yeah, yes. that were struck. But let's, you want to talk a little bit about the Senate bill? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I think it's very Talk much about connected. the Senate bill first, then we'll get yeah. to the other I, stuff. Well, I think the Senate bill, let me just say something that it is also happening at a time of increased Israeli aggression and violence against the Palestinians. Yes. Increased state as well as, uh, well, settlers, colonists, really, basically militias who are going around attacking Palestinians. We are hearing more and more and more. So um, Israel is stuck. Israeli supporters and apologists are stuck. They cannot find any ways to defend Israeli actions because they are indefensible. You cannot uh, defend violence, racist violence. You cannot defend taking of land. You cannot defend killing uh, uh, women and children. You cannot defend shooting uh, young people. You cannot defend... uh, uprooting olive trees or cutting them down, depriving people of livelihood. Everything that Israel is doing, we know again and again, including the bill that they passed, the so-called nation-state bill, that basically basically, actually really defines Israel according to its constitution. Uh, not, there is no constitution. According to its laws, to its laws. As, a, as an apartheid state that only favors one people, Jewish people against everybody else, especially the indigenous people of Palestine. So I think this is really important to keep in. So the apologies for Israel are actually very, um, they, have, they, have, they have an issue. They, they are stuck. They do not know how to defend Israel. The only way to do it is to attack people who are speaking up for justice and to stop the march towards justice, towards justice for in Palestine as part of the indivisibility for justice of more voices. Right. So let's keep into consideration that Jewish Voice for Peace, the largest Jewish organization in the United States, actually now adopts a position against Zionism. This is huge. It's an extra, We talked about it. It's that, an extraordinary yeah. position. But think about that. This is really, really important. There is multiple Jewish groups, if not now, IJAN, uh, young uh, groups, if not, uh, the, at San Francisco said, we're very happy, Jews against Zionism, Open Hillel. There are so many groups that are actually contesting the ownership of Jewishness by the Zionist groups and what uh, the forward, the Jewish forward calls the, the Jewish establishment. Okay, this is, so that's, I think it's really important to keep that in mind. Secondly, these groups are bullies. They are historically, they are historically used to, with APAC and the people they push around in Congress and they bribe them and they give them money, they twist their arms and so on. They are used to basically silencing everybody and crushing everybody. The fact that we stand up and speak up for rights is unacceptable to them. Right. So they become much nastier because they're also really stuck. I think it's really, really important the Root Institute uh, uh, com- campaign in 2010 saying that we need to delegitimize these people, we need to attack them and so on. It's 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 not working. It's it didn't not. work. It didn't no. work at uh, conf- attacking me on, of anti-Semitism, attacking everybody else, calling us terrorists. It didn't work. They failed in everything. We can talk about the lawsuit. So this is, I think, this is the context that comes to Congress, and it's not really. I mean, it's not a Senate bill. It's an ABAC. APAC bill. I think we really need to say this is an APAC bill. It's an APAC bill, but passed in the Senate. That used the tools of the senators, right. that they bribed And them. this is the, basically yeah. the third uh, attempt right. right, by Senator Rubio. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It started with Rubio. Mm-hmm. He failed miserably, Jamal. And then after that, it went to, and I'm, I'm really disturbed to say this, Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat who labels himself as, and might even run for president, wants to be labeled as progressive, is seen as kind of a voice for the voiceless. These are things that he said. Had had the second try. Yes. It didn't pass. Mm -hmm. And then we have the third version, the Rubio new improved version Mm -hmm. that actually did pass. But, Rabab, I do want to ask you, hold on one second. I want to ask Rabab this question. What do you make Mm -hmm. of the current political climate Mm -hmm. that we have complete gridlock in every aspect of our governmental process with the executive and legislative branch. Yet, they find it in their heart and their soul, even though they're... Sw- I don't think it's contradictory, Jess. I think this is, I mean, if you look at the history of the United States ev- or any other oppressive uh, governments, whenever they get stuck, they will resort to actually be attacking somebody else and picking on somebody else as the scapegoat yes. in order for them to think about building unity. I mean, you look at uh, look at Trump's tweets. Just let's do a little study. It's not going to be a big study because they're very short, and obviously they're not well-cited or well-informed. 
whatever. But we can actually look at the suite and just do a study within a week or something and see where it, where all of these things come together. It's an aggressive policy. It's a policy for to kind of like uh, expand greed. I mean, the, even yesterday, his, right. st- his statements against socialism and so right. on. Expand white supremacy. Exactly. Full of lies. The stuff that he did about the white uh, land orders in South Africa and against land reform. The stuff that he supported uh, the white su- supremacists in in, uh, in uh, Charlottesville. Right. The, the fact that he would not really condemn anti-Semitism. And he basically was told by the people in Pittsburgh, don't even bother don't even coming come. to yeah. pay condolences. And now he got a couple of people to go to the State of the Union. Okay, big deal. Again, he does not own Jewishness and they don't either and nor does Jared Kirshner because uh, the people there are a lot of people who've defied and stood up for what they think Jewishness is so this is kind of, it seems to me to be very consistent is that there are no sense of priorities that represent the majority of the people in this country the set of priorities is to support the rich is to support the aggressors is support corruption half of the people in government half of the people who are around, are around Trump are under investigation under corruption very similar by the way to the Israeli government and Netanyahu well, it's not very yeah. different. Okay, right. there is like it's a very similar recipe. They're they're going. They have the same memo. They're reading the same book, right? So you have this happening in Washington, and so it is not an agenda. Definitely, it's not an agenda of priority. I think what's really important is that there are there were senators who voted against it. Now, the status quo has historically been is that Israel goes unopposed. Nobody challenges. 20, 20, it's 20, usual 23, voted, usual. Yeah. 23 voted against it. Right. I want to take a minute mm. to name and shame these senators, these yes. democratic sh- senators mm-hmm. who voted. Basically, the, here are 25 mm-hmm. Democrats, mm-hmm. including Senator Angus King. Mm-hmm. He's an independent from Maine, mm-hmm. but caucuses, by the way, with the Democratic Party who voted with the GOP to send the anti boycott legislation to the House. Right, 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 right. Give me a minute here. Yeah. Bennett from, yeah. the, uh, from Colorado, right. Blumenthal, Connecticut, right. Cantwell, Washington, Cardin, Maryland, right. Casey, Pennsylvania, Coons, Delaware, Cortez Masto from Nevada, Duckworth, Illinois, Hassan, New Hampshire, mm-hmm. Jones, Alabama, King, Maine, uh, Klubacher uh, d- uh, from Minnesota. Klobuchar? Yeah, yeah, yeah Klobuchar, yeah, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, Manchin, or Mankin from Virginia. Manchin, yeah, uh, yeah. Menendez, New Jersey. Murray, uh, a Democrat from Washington. Rosen, Nevada. Peters, Michigan. Schumer uh, yeah. from New York. Which is no Cinema, surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arizona. Smith. Minnesota, Stabnow, uh, Michigan, mm-hmm. Tester, uh, Montana, Warner, Virginia, and White House, Rhode Island, and Wyden, Oregon. Shame on them. Well, yeah. not just shame, but, Jamal, but I these mean, are, but, but yes. I mean, seven, the, seven, well, seven or eight of them actually try to say that they're progressive. Well, that's a, this yeah, is the thing. Is you cannot really play this game, yeah. and this is very you important. You can't exceptionalize Palestine. You, you have can't. to be about justice for all, indivisibility. Full stop. Okay. But there is another thing that's really interesting, because uh, I, I, I follow, and we follow, because we actually move back and forth to New York, that there, there has been a very big debate in the S- State Assembly of New York, that there is a group that constituted some some kind of uh, a caucus within the Democratic Party that lined up with the, the Republicans and basically went against this black assemblywoman yes. who is like speaking that and then basically I mean it was really classical racism it was really classical presumed incompetent they tried to consider and they bas- and she won the same thing happened with the with the um, Cortez AOC um, yeah um, Al- um, Alexandra uh, yeah Ocasio, uh, Ocasio, Ocasio, Ocasio Cortez and this is it, this is the same people who when actually this is the remnants who actually it, it reminds me a lot of the Israel Israeli history of the Israeli Labour Party and Paris, the construction, they are the ones who are most civilized. They really know what's best for people. They know how to speak the right language and so on. And then everybody else is a riffraff. And everybody else who is being put down is person of color, women, queer people, indigenous people, people who come from marginalized communities, immigrants, uh, Muslims, Arabs, Palestinians. I mean, there is this kind of lining up that you have this greed and nastiness, racist white supremacist rule and then you have everybody else the majority of the people those people are raising uh, are are are, are refu- they're lifting taxes of themselves imposing more 
uh, stress upon the majority of the population, yes. deriving jobs away, uh, supporting no regulations whatsoever in rents, in, in everything, in everything they are doing. So you have a very nasty, vicious agenda that supports injustice. And you have the majority of the people in this country and the world who are for justice. And it's the same old recipe, just has different names today. But you know? I think, Rabab, what we can say, and you're making a very good point, is that on the plus side, there were 23 senators mm -hmm. who did vote against it. Right. Which is unusual because no, it's usually Israel is business as usual. No, exactly. it's, it's yeah. usually I mean, you're happy zero. because it's not 100%. No, no I'm not happy. I am not happy. I mean, I'm noting the differences. Okay, I'm noting the differences. It, it reflects yeah. some sort yeah. of political I, right. shift right. or political expediency mm. because some of the senators that voted against it this time... A lot of them are running for pre thinking they're, they're running for but president. But not only that, it really shows, most importantly, I think it really shows how far we have come yes. in what Behnam always calls turning the tide. Mm -hmm. You know, the tide is turning. Things are changing. Things, things are, changing. are changing, including in the United States. Things have changed. I've said all the time around the world, people support Palestine. People support justice in for Palestine. It, it seems like a no brainer. When you come to the United States, Israel and the Israeli apologists, the Zionists believe that this is their turf. How dare you? One of the things that they're doing is how dare you even challenge our total domination of the U.S., of the policies and so on. Now we're going to the Senate. And we're going kind of like somewhere where it's actually showing that more and more people, not only realizing, because I think people realize, I saw this whole thing that I didn't know and now I know. It's not true because there is Google. You can just go and find everything easily. It's not uh, about Aaron, education. Not, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you're listening to Arab Talk on KPOO San Francisco. This is 89.5 FM. Our guest in the studio is Dr. Rabab Abdelhadi. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to talk a little bit about Ahmed mm -hmm. and about uh, yes. the progress in your lawsuit, mm -hmm. but also with the big win uh, against uh, Law lawfare. And, and I just want to, mm -hmm. before we shift uh, from this topic, yeah, yeah. just also remind, mm -hmm. remind us all that this bill, the uh, S1, S1, the anti by, yeah. by Sen uh, yeah, but, but, but there is also a little bit kind of a misconception about mm -hmm. this bill, because mm -hmm. we keep talking about the anti-BDS bill, yeah, which is yeah, true, yeah. but this bill uh -huh. that Senator, and but that is that has been sponsored by Senator Marco Rubio, is a package of foreign policy bills right. that includes $38 billion in military aid to Israel. That's right. And he stuck, he buried within it. As they do. The combating, this is what he calls it, combating BDS Act, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which would give states and localities more legal right. authority to penalize mm -hmm. companies and individuals uh, who participate. So <laughs> I think also, but let's not lose sight uh, yeah, I think about it's very the 38, 38, 38 billion yes, dollars yeah, that yes, they want to yeah. send Mm -hmm. you know, right. towards Israel, and then, and it's kind of like, by the way, mm -hmm. let's squeeze in but this unconstitutional clause but, but let's and bury it within that bill. Exactly, but here's the question, guys. With the current climate, because, you know, for a bill to pass, right. it passes in the Senate, it has to, to pass House. in the House, right. there has to be reconciliation, yes. Yes. and then it goes to the executive to sign. Mm -hmm. I think that perhaps for the first time in our memories, mm -hmm. there probably could not be enough votes in the Congress to get this passed. I think it all, I mean... It's possible. It's possible. I, I don't know. It's but possible. But it has to go to the Congress now. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's really uh, important to hold our, uh, our representatives accountable. accountable because absolutely. representatives of the public are supposed to be accountable to the public, not to the donors and the lobby that basically tries to twist arms and pass on terrible agendas. I think what I was saying before is, I think what's really important is that now more people in uh, representatives are realizing that you cannot actually give Israel a blanket check and get away with it. No. It, they, they may do it in private, they may do it in secret, but if you want to do it publicly, you are basically saying what in 1985 we were all saying is that apartheid is a bad word, apartheid is a bad thing, and you're allying with apartheid, you are basically supporting injustices. Exactly. And as if you were in, during the civil rights, the height of the civil rights movement, in the 60s, if you're actually supporting segregation, you are supporting racism. And what people did in both South Africa and in the U.S. and everywhere else is resort to boycott 
is demand sanctions, is demand divestment from things that are really terrible. It's a very basic, simple formula. Right. So there is, it's a very simple tool to do, to kind of like, okay, I'm not going to participate in furthering injustice. That's basically what, what, what BDS is saying. And more and more people are realizing that they can't actually do that and use Israel as business as usual. Everything is okay right. and get away with it. And that even their ties with the donors, with the money, with the pressure, with whatever, all of the stuff. And I should say it's not just APAC. I mean, APAC is a very big. But then also the, the Christian uh, Zionist, Zionist movement. the very extreme right wing. I mean, one of the reasons the Christian Zionists switched support for Trump is because he fulfilled, quote unquote, his promise to move the U.S. embassy we'll from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Right. Right. Thus stepping all over Palestinian rights to this holy city and the fact that this holy city should be holy for all, for all. not only for Israeli Jews and basically Rabab, I have to add, I have to just say one more mm -hmm. thing and mm -hmm. we talked about this last week but I have to say it in front of you which is mm -hmm. look at the irony mm -hmm. we are allowed to boycott American companies mm -hmm. yeah easily mm -hmm. we can boycott Trump Hotel if we want mm -hmm. grapes we, and chili we <laughs> yeah. we can criticize mm -hmm. Anybody we want in right. this country, right. this is part of our mm -hmm. yes. our constitutional right. And yet the Senate mm -hmm. has the audacity to pass yes. a law yes. that limits yes. our ability to do something in relation to another foreign Yeah, but power. let me let me say something. Just look, um, in, in two weeks, we and we will be talking about it, it's going to be the, the day of remembrance yes. for the construction of concentration camps for Japanese Americans and Japanese people That's right. in the U.S. It is going to be anniversary in August of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. In terms of the DOR, in terms of the in concentration camps for the Japanese, it was the government that supported it. That's right. McCarthy and beca began with the Committee of the Un-American Activities that basically prosecuted people based on their beliefs. That's why we talk about McCarthyism. So it's this, the, the thing is, is that the history, let's say, the history of the U.S. government and the history of U.S. Uh, Congress people and so on has not always been good. Even the Supreme Court, because we're talking about the separation of powers, it all depends who sits on the Supreme That's Court right. and what they do and what they don't do. I mean, they passed... They but they supported the Muslim ban because of the makeup of the Supreme Court. It's always about power. It's always about holding people accountable. So when we come to Congress and say, what will Congress do? I, th I do believe in holding uh, representatives accountable. And I support people who go and sit in the offices of the Congress people, the senators and so on, and hold them accountable. It is not the only strategy. And people should not only get activated only for years or every two years and so on. We should always be holding people accountable all the time because the more you out and make transparent these things, this backroom deals and all of this corruption that is going on and say you need to be consistent and so on and educate people in the in the process, the, the less likely it is for these policies to continue going. But I think it's a very long term. So may yes. the, the Senate, don't forget also there is a, a, a rift now between the Republicans and the Democrats, which I think is really important to remember because during the Vietnam War, one of the things, and we used to always say as Palestinians when we were analyzing, is that part of the problem for Palestine solidarity in, in the U.S. and getting it because the ruling class in the U.S. is united around Israel, but it is divided, it was divided around Vietnam, and that's what made it possible that's to right. actually, for the movement to build itself, support the struggle of the heroic people of Vietnam, you know, very affected yesterday two days ago was the lunar new year but That's also right. we have we've been in vietnam in december you know our first trip but it was there was a division in the ruling class and that allowed it to happen now we're seeing something like this today exactly. so i think all of this stuff bringing it together and and this is why if we it, you know we, we you can decide when you want to move on to talk about ahmed and so on but this is why we need programs like this this is why we need to educate not only about issues that we think are quote unquote our issues they're not just our issues but all questions of justice all issues and ask people intelligent questions that raise critical issues so people can think if they decide to support injustice it's their choice I mean you cannot but save we, everybody but we need to but, call them out but you yeah. need to well, call the, them out you we need, need to, to educate the, yeah. question, the question is what part of I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and against and all enemies, but the truth. Foreign, <laughs> and foreign and domestic. Right. The, these senators didn't understand. Yeah. That's the only. This is the only question I have for them. I'm not in it. Just if they can answer which part they didn't understand of this of their oath. 
you know, then they can explain to me why they voted to shred the First Amendment and shred the Constitution. Yeah. I want to switch gears right yeah. here because I want to give you time. First, you know, because I know a lot of people join us each time, new people. I want to briefly to talk a little bit about Ahmed and the mm -hmm. program right. because it's yes. very important. Yes. And then move on to the big, basically, in my opinion, one of the greatest victories. Absolutely, one uh, of the greatest and, victories. And, and then this is the example of in, where, where... In the history of jurisprudence. What, really? what I said, well, I think so. Well, I said, this is where we're seeing... In academia, yeah. Well, I said, this is where we're seeing the tide shifting. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That, uh, you know, uh, your small but capable legal team and and your work and the, and all the support around you Vietnam. Were, <laughs> were able to defeat inspired, the yeah. so-called mega, mega mega lawfare mega project two two hundred lawyers three times, no they had over, almost 900 yeah not so one not one Whoa. but three times yeah yeah and uh, you know that the, their case was dismissed uh, dismissed mm -hmm. Uh, and and now, of course, there's a new case that you are mounting yourself mm -hmm. and a justified one. So I'll, briefly about Ahmed and let's Le yeah. go so there. So the Ahmed, the Arab and Muslim ethnicities and diaspora studies program, uh, which wasn't the original name. Um, the, the San Francisco State had a different name, even calling it Islamic. And I, we had this big debate about it. People misnomer. I mean, this is very similar to when they were saying Islamic. Addison was saying Islamic people. Islamic, Islamic and people. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, John Kerry also said other. Muslim speaking troops. Well, <laughs> he's a he wrote scholar, Muslim speaking well, troops. And SFSU says Islamic people. I'm kind of like, why can't you get it wrong? Just well, go Google it and check it. The other day someone called me Arabian. Just Arabian. <laughs> you know, honest, Arabian is a horse. Listen, we've been called <laughs> much worse. Yeah, but I mean, but I think it's part of the education. Anyway, we came, I came, I was heavily recruited, as you know, you were very much... Uh, uh, just involved in this and Jamal was already on the task force which I'm not going to talk about this now we can talk about the detailed history because we don't have enough time right but I was basically heavily recruited to come and set up a program as an international scholar of Palestine studies that will uh, steer 12 faculty members this is at least according to Dean That's Montero right. who kept he even sent me the list I found it the other day you will steer these faculty members. You will build a program of international stature. They were very impressed by the Center for Arab American Studies that I was directing in Michigan and the international connections and the domestic and the various donations with various communities and so on. And when he when it was when I said, "Where is this program going to be?" and he said, "The College of Ethnic Studies." I said, "This is really great. I'm very excited because what it does it brings scholarship, pedagogy." and public uh, role, advocacy right. together. That's and this right. is exactly what you need to do with a program. Whether you, in any university, but especially in a public university like San Francisco State, that has a social justice mission. So I, I, I came, there was a lot of tension, as but, you but, remember. But let's not yeah. forget, you came from the University of Michigan. Yes. Rabab, one of the most... Okay, uh, Jazz. I, I mean, <laughs> this is the way I feel about Nablus. <laughs> this is not about this alma mater. Yeah, well, uh, no, but, but I mean, for yes, context, yeah, to yeah, be heavily yes, recruited yes, from yes, one of yeah. the best universities in the world, frankly. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it was. There, was, there was heavy recruitment. I did take a pay cut. I agreed to take a pay cut. But it was that the university committed, and this is what we can like yes. talk a little bit, come back to the lawsuit, but the university committed to build the program with a critical mass. Even though they said you will steer 12 faculty members, I said that's not enough. I need a critical mass. That's right. And I insisted not to sign the contract until the university committed to hiring two other tenure track positions right. to work with me on the road to hiring more so we can actually build the department the fifth department in the college of ethnic studies i also insisted that we wanted to have uh, support from the university there were multiple things that we've and, and and i said okay i will take a cut in my salary in, re in, in return for this and everybody knows and then I came in and there was a lot of tensions between the university and the community and the students over the Palestinian mural honoring the late Edward Said because the university especially the president President Corrigan and the uh, the pro-Israel community the Zionists including the Jewish Community Relations Council were very much against the two symbols in the mural the little cartoon character of Handala which was the cartoon character that Najil Ali the Palestinian uh, cartoonist who was assassinated in London by the Mossad created and Handala was carrying in one hand a pen because this is about knowledge it's about this is the only thing you can take with you when you get expelled from your 
country from your home. The only the, thing the you can get is, is your the sword. Pen. It's your sword, exactly. Uh, Ghassan Kanavani even said that. Al Kalima al Bundukuya, the word is the gun. And the second uh, had the key. That's and on right. top of it, it says al the right of return. Right. And both of them were completely opposed to. And uh, when I came, we actually all remember we had big I meetings. I invited people to come to Ahmed to have a discussion about it and so on. We agreed. We're going to agree to remove these symbols for now to have a mural, which was a compromise, a very bad compromise. But at the same time, Hamdallah will live and all of the stuff will live and it has lived. Okay. So basically, we resolved some big crisis for the university. We get, within two years, the attacks began, but I don't want to talk about. But I want to talk about what happened. I yeah. know, but you left out an important point, Rabab. Mm, mm. The faculty positions mm. and the commitment to you and right, Ahmed right. was actually part of your contract. Yes, it, it is my it's my contract. I would not have signed it. This is what, one mean, of the things really, I insisted on. But that's really important. It was of a course. contractual agreement. Of course, it's my on contract. Paper. I would have never signed the contract if I didn't get if I didn't get ten months academic uh, faculty, not 12-month administrative. I mean, President Corrigan had to send me a revised contract. Yes. I would not. I refused. I said, I'm not going to sign. Thank you very much. The, I compromised on three things. One is I agreed to two faculty lines instead of three. Right. Two is I agreed to be associate professor, not full professor. And three, I agreed to take a cut in my salary. These are the three things that I accepted because it was such a promising thing. I came, we built it. We have been attacked. The attacks took maybe a lull for about maybe about six months or a year and so on after we set up the mural. Mm -hmm. But they resumed in 2009 That's because right. uh, the students, cops, basically created the mural uh, anniversary and had Omar Barghouti, one right. of the co-founders of BDS. You remember just because you were very much in charge. You actually moderated the I event. was the moderator right. of that right. infamous right. night. Right. And it was an amazing event. And it so was. On. But, the, but the JCRC from then, um, at least I think before, the team seems that they were lobbying before, but then they came and opposed it. They demanded the shut off the event. Corrigan was smart, said no. I'm not going to violate academic freedom. But uh, they raised questions about me. They raised questions about funding to the university. Yep. They threatened and so on. And then it began the next, in a, in a few days, a few a couple of weeks, I think, uh, Corrigan canceled the searches we were doing, which were already approved by the university. That's right. For, by, by, by the HR, by everybody else. It was vetted, everything. And by the way, sometimes the university says, oh, well, it's because we had an economic crisis in 2008. I said, but the economic crisis was already there in 2009 when I submitted the job right. description and they were approved. Plus so they were hiring other people at the time. They were, but I'm saying this, if you say that and you say it's economic, so why did you even approve them to it, start it, with? It was the anyway, easy excuse Anyway, but, but they basically, they canceled the searches and then they proceeded to basically delete them from the budget. At the same time, also rising Islamophobia was coming up. And by the way, also the connection was with the 2008-2009 Israeli attack on Gaza. So... All of this stuff is not, it's always, Palestine is always presence, and they try to use technical reasons in order to, like what they're doing now. What happened, this is a very continuous attack from uh, the, uh, the JCRC to Amcha coming and accusing me of glorifying the murder of Jews and being anti-Semitic, to Campus Watch trying to stop the, the agreement with An-Najah, to uh, Horowitz putting up posters, hateful posters around campus and violent posters, and to uh, the lawsuit. There, is, there were multiple things. Every single time they tried, and I think this is my, 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 my belief, is that what they tried to do, the attack, first, uh, Corrigan removed the faculty line, so I remain a one-person faculty member. And then what, they, what the Zionist uh, groups, the pro-Israeli groups tried to do then is to dismantle the program. That's first, right. not to allow it to be uh, institutionalized. Now, when we institutionalize it, and we got 22 courses, all GE, Fulfilled General Education right. Requirement, which means every single student at the university has to take one of them as a group of courses. And we on, then we went into the Ahmed minor and we had an academic minor approved, which is the first one in the world, by the way. Then we went and we set up the Edward Said Scholarship, which also was Folks were trying to block it, and we can talk about them if you want to. And then they tried to also block the Memorandum of Understanding with Al Najah National University, then, and they've been attacking it less, and we have it. And now the most recent thing that, and then they tried to block the Teaching Palestine project that we have started two years ago, and we had all these successful conferences and so on. Now, they are also trying to block the latest program we're doing, which is study abroad in Palestine, right. taking San Francisco State students to study in Palestine. And it is an amazing project. We're going to make it happen. Basically, yeah. it's a systematic attack. Right. Every time yes. you make a move, every right. time you yes. show yeah. some success, they try to But, Rabab, 10 they years. Yeah, it. 12. 
So, so I want to yeah, twelve years now. I know, I know been, that's yeah, right. I know. I want to. Yeah. I want to fast forward because we. Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, this is a general idea, mm, and mm. I wanted to uh, just give our an idea to our new kind of followers and listeners. Fast forward. There were three lawsuits, or yes. one lawsuit that got amended and then amended. They lost. Yes, right? and this was the lawfare. Le- yeah, lawfare. Whose executive director said that they're going to make the enemy pay, and they're going to exact a heavy price of anybody who goes against Israel. And she had mentioned the same video, San Francisco State. And now, by the way, she has a promotional uh, fundraising video on YouTube that talks about my case. But they lost. I mean, they lost. They dismissed lost with prejudice. With prejudice. With prejudice. Okay. That's right. They're filing. Which means they, they can't bring it again. They can't bring it again. They 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 appeal to. The the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal in order for them to tell their supporters, give us money because they have right. no suit. They right. have no cause. Okay. So they lost big time. And the, but the, then they, they yeah. filed another lawsuit, but mm. they did not name you. Yeah. But let me talk about right. that one. I think it's really, really important. You mentioned the lawyers and the amazing Mark mm. and, and Benham who are just incredible and defending me pro bono and the movement, the amazing movement that built together. But the other thing is that the decision of Judge Oreck, the decision itself is actually a political decision too. It, yes. it is not at, because the first time he dismissed it on technical, you know, reasons and so on, and told them this is what you need to do if you want to bring he it. He gave them two chances. He for gave them two chances. Then they, they they came and they came with the same stuff and they tried to smear and they did all of these things and so on. His decision, dismissed with prejudice, I think it's a textbook to be read, to be read and analyzed. Because for me, it's very gratifying for him to say just because she's anti-Zionist and supports Palestinian resistance does not make her anti-Semitic. He allowed, as a judicial notice, the whole website of the United States Campaign for Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel. That's right. He heard arguments. He did not allow them in, but they were presented by 12 Jewish scholars, senior Jewish scholars, who said that I am, this, is, this is, doesn't fit. It doesn't really make sense. They supported me. By Open Hillel, that challenges Hillel, and it's, it's the Raconian and McCarthy and so on. So the lawsuit itself, the text itself actually is a text to be a... So then what they did is they went to the state court and they filed a a, a lawsuit against San Francisco State University and California State University. They don't name me in it, but they're actually attacking the the stuff that they failed. They failed to uh, prosecute me on the question of near Barakat protest, on the question of no you right fair. Now they're focusing on no you right in the state court and trying to basically bring people to have the position. Part of the reason is they failed in the lawfare lawsuit also. They could not get me to come give a deposition. They could not get a single piece of paper. They could not. They got some stuff from the university. For example, they have 400 pages of my correspondence with Najah National University. Because if you remember, in the first one mm-hmm. they filed, they said, oh, she's going to indoctrinate student uh, about terrorism, and we need all the stuff from Najah National University. And the un- university gave them everything. Okay, There is nothing. So then they took it out of the second amended, but they didn't say anything. And they never apologized to me for making all these accusations around me. But but we did not give them anything. We, we, we insisted that the university should not settle, and the university did not settle. They were going to settle. And we said, no, you yeah. cannot. You cannot not settle for the universe, you cannot settle for me. Well, it seems so, to me, I mean, uh, my read, and I'm not mm. a legal expert, maybe next time we'll have your lawyers, yes. Mark and Benham, right here. Yeah. But my read, number one, of course, we all know that they have deep pockets. Yes. I mean, these guys have 800 plus lawyers. They have unlimited, un- 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 unlimited funds. Yeah. They can file lawsuit after lawsuit, and they've yes. been doing this. But now, I think they're coming to the conclusion that they've lost. They want to save face, and they're going after the institution, which is San Francisco State University, or which the is or, easy to give or up. CSU, they're hoping I think for a settlement, yes, so they can tell so their claim followers, some kind of a victory. Yeah, yeah, here is a victory. Yes, yes, yes. For now, sure. yeah. uh, we we talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Now I want we have. 15 minutes or so. I have to say, one of my lawyers actually representing people in the lawsuit against the law fair. Yeah. Really? At San Francisco State. Yeah. yeah. Mark Kleiman, he's yeah. also represented two people yeah. in the ASA That's lawsuit. That's excellent. So, and and yeah. they recently had a, they had a win. Which? No, this is different. Also, another, basically, mm-hmm. a win for the attack on the, Amer- you know, for... American Studies, two American days ago. American Studies. Yeah, two days ago. So it's dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it's show, yes. it's my showing colleagues. Yeah, yeah, it's showing yes, a yes. pattern, and yeah. Mark also is yeah. involved in Was that. Was defending two of my colleagues. Exactly. Yeah. So, Rabab, let me yeah. ask you this. Mm. Uh, just hold on one second, Jamal. I want to get into the new lawsuit. We, no, we will. <laughs> mm. Before we get to the new lawsuit, mm. put the ASA, your win, 
all of these things, like in a little bit of context, Rabab, before we talk about your lawsuit. Yeah, well, let me because say, it's yes, kind of yes, yes. part of this larger context. That's why I was saying about what's happening in the Congress as part of an indication yes. of the breaking uh, the solidity of the sta- business as usual, status quo, Israel does no wrong, we support Israel, and so on. So uh, I do believe, I am, I'm, I'm convinced, and everybody knows my beliefs, it's not a secret. The university knew this before they hired me. They already knew because I was already one of the people who actually worked on the founding the Academic Alt Cultural Boycott of Israel before the BDS movement, you know, the call came out in 2005. So I'm very clear. My position is very clear. I organized in 1985 a, a, a national 26-day, 26-city campaign called Israel and South Africa, the Apartheid Connection in the midst of the anti-apartheid yeah, movement. That's funny, I remember so, that. So people know, you know, it's not a secret, but I am convinced that one of the ways is you really have to, a, you, th- our job is to produce knowledge. And we need to produce knowledge for justice, okay? And to do that, that also challenges all the dogmas that exist from support for Israel and so on. So part of the things is that when you see wrong, there is no way you can justify to your students that you are supported the wrong if you don't stand up for justice. You cannot do that, especially at a public university where it is accountable to the public. I mean, this is our mission. Just because some Congress people and some senators deviate from what the rule is, that does not make it right. Might does not make it right, and they do wrong. We have to keep challenging and holding people accountable. So everything that has happened, I mean, look, I'm, I'm Association of Asian American Studies, American Studies Association, uh, and, uh, and Native American Indigenous Studies Association, National uh, Association for Chicana Chicano Rights, uh, b- several Association of Black Studies, National Women's Studies Association. That's right. The Association of right. Peace and Justice Studies. There is some historians. Oral, there is so much stuff. This is something that you're not able to stop. It was at the, maybe at the beginning was a small thing. Now it's a, an international movement. They tried to take down Jeremy Corbyn. Theresa May is the one who got embarrassed with the Brexit and so on. So there is, you, it's very, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of resources. We don't have definitely deep pockets, but we have the depth of the support of justice for the movement. So okay. this is where... where now, for our listeners who mm. maybe joined us a little late, that's the voice of uh, Professor Rabab Abdelhadi, founder and director of the Ahmed program at San Francisco State, one of the foremost uh, academicians uh, in the world on... Uh, intersectional aspects of Palestine and Palestine history. She's an extraordinary academic. You might, lo- you might forget that in, in light of the fact that she's been such a target for 12 years. But actually, in spite of that, she's been managing to produce an amazing body of uh, academic research. And I, mean, I think this is the, the objective is to basically litigate us to death. Right. To wear us down. But let's get to talk to, about your yeah, lawsuit and this now. is what's going on. What's it's happening with your lawsuit, Rabobo? Okay, so the reason I filed the lawsuit after 12 years being at So San you're Francisco, filing the lawsuit I against filed the, the university? To hold the university accountable. And basically San Francisco because State. San Francisco State violated my contract. It's a breach of contract, straightforward breach of contract. And also that it, is, it is about discrimination, racism, Islamophobia, anti-Arab, anti-Palestinian, disparate treatment between also how they are, we are being treated at San Francisco State. And I'm not speaking about all people of color, even though it is about that. It's, there is also discrimination and racism. San Francisco State is becoming a police state. Not only that our police carry tasers, but also for them to even say to David Horowitz, give us heads up whenever you want to come and put all these nasty posters. Meanwhile, they do not stop a Nazi you know, who's putting all this nasty propaganda and all this violent stuff on, on, on their websites. And uh, San Francisco State has m- done everything possible in collusion with the Zionists. I am convinced that San Francisco State is working hand in hand with the Zionists, not only their donor, with the Zionists and with the right wing, uh, with wing agenda. They are basically messing up what San Francisco State is supposed to be Historically, about. Historically, for many. And they, yeah. what they use, they also they bribe some people, they help, uh, you know, ask some people things, they bat some people on the back, they threaten some people, and so on. So there is a lot of tools that is actually, A, making my life as a person, as a scholar, they're trying to make my life miserable. So I would just shut up. And basically, it's affecting my career because I'm spending a lot of time defending myself yes. and standing up to build the program instead of sitting down writing articles writing things and so on it's, con- it's constant they constantly use even bureaucratic the abuse of the bureaucracy little things every single piece of paper becomes such a huge thing 
uh, my courses now have been taken away from me wow. and uh, and by his direct direct attack to kind of like undermine the army studies program and dismantle it and damage it uh, they using uh, my request for a family medical leave to exploit it against me to you know this is all the pressure tactics this even is though what it's your this legal is what right yeah, this is what McCarthyism right. did yeah. McCarthyism smears people ask for your friend to stand against you hires scabs uh, threatens your livelihood tries to pressure you sends you this we, we, ha we received the death um, uh, on the voicemail the guy left a message saying Muslims will die we send it to the university. Nobody investigates them. They always they say care. they investigate. They don't do anything about that. Uh, they have they have violated my disabilities uh, accommodation. They have violated my contract. They have even uh, they actually denied me my my application for difference in pay leave next year to do teaching Palestine project. And the way that I get to receive the, the letter from the president saying, based on your college recommendation, the project is not well defined. It's not doable. And it doesn't connect to your career. I'm like, you know, we, we, met, we did most of it already. <laughs> We've actually accomplished most it, of the teaching Palestine project. It doesn't project. connect to your career? It doesn't connect. You've been it, doing no, this your whole well career. It's not well-defined. It's not well-defined. I'm like, what do you mean it's not well-defined? It's actually, I mean, it, the thing is, is that this is only a lot of examples, and we don't have enough time well, to talk no, about No, no, but that is it. a yeah. very troubling issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the case. Yes. And, you know, like San Francisco State University, it's a bub public university. It's yes. supposed to accommodate all people, all ethnicities, all creeds, yes. etc. When I walk on campus, there are Arabs and Muslims and African-Americans and, and, and Latinos and, and whatever. People. Yes, but yes. when I look, and maybe I am a nosy journalist, mm -hmm. right? And I look at the paperwork, etc. There is a major connection, and, and, and I'll, yes. I'll, I'll connect it because we've devoted actually two shows talking about, for example, the, uh, the Jewish Community Federation of San yes, Francisco, right. yes. and this, uh, this work was uh, uh, investigative journals that were, was done, forward. done by the, the forward, forward and other and people others, and others, and, others yeah. and yeah. electronic mm. intifada. And we found and the out. Lobby, the Al Jazeera. We found Sanfrisco. out. Yeah. We found out that they have spent more than three hundred million dollars. The Helen Diller Foundation to, to support to support yeah. these they gave a lot. these yeah. groups yeah. like uh, you David, know, Horowitz, David Horowitz, David Horowitz, Amcha, Amcha, Campus Watch, all the groups that have been us. All yeah, the groups yeah, that yeah. have been harassing you and harassing yes, other yes. academics. Right. Yes. And they've been silent about it. Mm -hmm. And this is because they cannot deny it. We, we have the documents from their tax yes. filing yes. on yes. this. Yes. Then, being a nosy person reading, we know that right here in San Francisco, the JCRC... Jewish Community Relations Council. ...has conducted several meetings mm -hmm. with the president and the higher echelon at San Francisco State and University. And took them to Israel on all... Is they took him to Israel, yeah. exactly. Yes. Yes. So I've been seeing this name. I know at San Francisco State University, there is um, Jason Port. Yes. And he is uh, the uh, executive director of uh, the, uh, the university corporation. Uh, the university corporation. Yes. Then digging around, there is also... Abby Porth, and she's the executive director of the G JCRC. Yes, it was in the latest article by the J Weekly last week about the case. And they smells, are, they have been, fishy. they yeah. have been basically behind the attacks on you. Yes. How is this possible? <laughs> just, just a question. I mean, I'd like to know, I mean, well, and, this $300 is, and, this has been, worth of and this has been kept out of the media. Now it's coming out. And we know, you know, the $300 million, all these organizations, by the way, it's not just organizations right here in the United States. No, all over the there, country. No, no, there is settlement, settlement organizations settlement money. like Ear David. JD, which is, JDL which, has actually contributed to the which Canary is a Mission. Terrorist. Wait a minute. Yes. The JDL contributed to yeah, this? Yeah, to the Canary Mission. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Just it was in have, one of the four they have, I think. they have organizations in Europe who are anti-Muslim, Islamophobic. The is also the suing people left and right. So, yeah. so, yeah. so the question yeah. is, you, you look at this whole circle. Well, how does San Francisco State get away with that? And them? when, you know, I mean, all the issues yes. Yes. like about Islamophobia, about anti-Arab sentiments, the community goes through hell just to have a meeting with yes. the administration just to kind of oh, he hasn't talk had any about meetings. I've so tried, he wouldn't I've tried no, and, then meetings. and then they're meeting left yes. and right and basically trying to destroy your career right. destroy Ahmed. let me say let me tell let you me they, know. Met, they met with jcrc 
They've met with Anti-Defamation League. Uh, JCRC uh, is bragging about sensitizing the highest administrators at San Francisco State on Zionism. That's after President Wang last uh, March said Zionists are welcomed and I criticized them <laughs> and said this is offensive and so on. And they tried to actually shut me down I and ma that. force me to take down a Facebook. And it was the dean of the College of Ethnic Studies as well as the provost that participated in, as the tools doing this. Uh, they have so they've they've been trying to do all of this. They're also, I should just say you're as you're mentioning Jason Port. Jason Port was the chief of staff of President Corrigan when I started. I okay. remember that. He also went to speak. He was also the president of the Raoul Wallenberg Jewish Democratic Club, the Jewish Club in the Democratic Party in San Francisco, whose one of its goals is to support Israel. In 2010, when Israel targeted the Mavi Marmara, the ship. Uh, we went, a whole bunch of us from the Palestinian, Arab, Muslim uh, communities of justice went to the Board of Supervisors I remember to that. ask them to pass a resolution to condemn the violence and to also lift the blockade on Gaza. I spoke at the first week. The second week, who speaks is but Jason Porth, telling the Board of Supervisors that this is not an issue that concerns San Francisco. It's a foreign issue very far away, and San Franciscans should not be involving themselves with foreign affairs and so on, which is very interesting. Because they, he was one of the people who was involved in the near Barkatu campus. Mm. I mean, so if you don't want to get involved in foreign affairs, what are you doing bringing <laughs> the mayor of occupied Jerusalem to speak on campus? He, so he spoke against that. Then I, when I was trying to do the Edward Said scholarship, he actually tried to block it. And I had to get in touch with Maryam Said to say that the estate actually doesn't have a problem with it. And Maryam and uh, the children, uh, well, not children anymore, they actually support. The, my husband was an educator. What Rabab is doing is education. We support it wholeheartedly. He tried to, last year he pressured and he succeeded in getting the dean to ensure the room, mm -hmm. which last, it was yesterday, the anniversary of teaching Palestine at San Francisco State, February 7th, 2000. They, he, every single time I submit a request for travel authorization, especially to Palestine, and I say MOU with an najah they always say to me to try to change it and they hold it up and they say, you're not going to get reimbursed. You need to change it in consultation with the president office. And I said, no, because I've already consulted with the president office. We already have the memorandum of understanding. I'm not going to change it. So I get an email from the dean saying, you're not going to get reimbursed. And then I say, no, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. And they say, you will not get the money. I said, it's fine. I'll so take Rabab, my chances. I, I, so it, yeah, go I ahead. want to just mm. say, because we only have a couple mm. of minutes mm. left. We'll continue some of this next mm. week. Yes. We get lots of calls mm -hmm. about what people can do to support you. Right. Well, I know and I'm not supposed to ask for fundraising. No, so but this is not about fundraising. But I'm going to say But what? what about a website? I want people, there is a website. There is multiple websites. There is a website called the International Campaign to Support Professor Abdul Hadi. There is what's, a, what's the website it's title? It's on Facebook. It's all, just go it's Google. Uh, go Google Rabab Abdul Hadi will come up, okay? Okay. But we really want, I want people to call San Francisco State now and ask them, why did they cancel my classes? Why did they take my classes away from me? Why did they mess up with the course that Zahra Billo, the executive director of care was going to teach and now we lost it um, anymore. Why do they continue messing up with my, why are they using my what? application for study abroad in Palestine to mess up with my summer courses? Mm -hmm. Why are they continuing to punish us left and right? What's the phone number for San Francisco State? Um, it's in the, I can give it to you if you want to put it on the website. Yeah, we, is, we actually sure. have it in one of my Facebook. I have the president, okay. the, de the call provost the president, and the dean and the interim Call dean, the president, call the dean, call the, the provost, provost and ask them why are they Why are they this? attacking you? Why are they, why are they hands of, I think, hands of Rabab, hands of Ahmed. This should be hands of our students. This should the be the, the goal. The bottom yeah. line, mm -hmm. I would say also follow the money, follow the $300 yes. million dollars that yes. have been spent on basically attacking ac academic freedom, defaming Muslims, defaming Arab scholars, defaming, defaming, Palestine. defaming Palestinians and students. And also in your, basically, I assume in your discovery, we will get to see who are the key players who have yes, been right. meeting with who? They're refusing to give us public record. Which is they I have to. to give no, us they public have to. Record. Which yeah. I find it funny because the whole Trump scandal is about who met with whom. Mm -hmm. yes. And once when we, and once, once yeah. when and where, yes. and once we get to all of this, mm -hmm. we're going to be naming names. Stay tuned. This yes. is Arab Talk on KPO San Francisco. Make sure you... Uh, Basically, go to our website, arabtalkradio.com. We have all our archived shows. Also, uh, we broadcast live on KPO 89.5 FM San Francisco. And, and we want to thank Professor Rabab Abdul Hadi again for her, for her steadfastness. Yes. And uh, we'll see you next week. I'm inspired by the Palestinian people and people around the world. 
Stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Thank you.